we're gonna give uh, Bruce Perky, oh, who hates no, me now. Thanks. Yeah, no thanks. No, no, you can thank me later because you're gonna tell us about sleeping dogs. I'm kidding. Okay, L- look, you're gonna get. I'm gonna get to Bruce Perky in two seconds, and he's gonna ca- commandeer this review of Sleeping Dogs. It stars Russell Crowe. He plays Roy Freeman. He's a sort of sort of a retired detective. You know why? Because Roy Freeman is suffering from early onset dementia. He's having memory loss. Thing is, there is a criminal from his past who requests a sort of audience with him, and he goes to the criminal, the criminal's in jail, and the criminal, Khan, says to him, hey, guess what, Roy? You need to get me out of jail because I never committed that murder, okay? And Roy's going, what are you talking about? This, You did this, and he said, no, you got a piece of, you got to get me out of here. I'm going to be dead here in prison. You got to save me. And that so begins this sort of familiar tale because last week we did Michael Keaton, a Michael Keaton movie where he played a hitman who's having dementia, another dementia filled movie, this time not Michael Keaton, but Russell Crowe. While he's suffering from his mental loss, his memory loss, he's still trying to figure out whether or not this person in jail is innocent or guilty. And he goes back and tries to figure out this invest- investigation, which reportedly may have gone south years ago. Also in th- the cast is Tommy Flanagan from Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy. He plays Flanagan. Play yes, yes, Eric. I, I love Flanagan too. He has a media role in this movie as Roy Freeman's partner, loyal partner, Karen Gillan from Guardians of the Galaxy. She plays sort of a femme fatale, very intelligent, beautiful woman, and she has her own place in this story, which goes in the middle of the film. It's a, it is a Russell Crowe movie, but what's interesting is this mystery sort of turns on everything on its head where you get sort of a mini movie in the middle of the narrative and we're going to go to Bruce right now talk about Sleeping Dogs what did you think of the movie well um, this isn't necessarily my cup of tea that this kind of neo-noir it's not as overheated as it could be but okay first of all <laughs> you know how it's kind of a writing crutch right now like if a person is writing some kind of a story and they can't figure out how to get around cell phones they'll just make it in 1985 or something or they'll make it in 1975 it's like oh now we don't have cell phones so i can have a bunch of plot things happen that wouldn't happen currently i think that this dementia memory thing is becoming one of those little writing devices because we sure have had a lot of those it's a aging a-list actor gets dementia and has to solve something. It seems to be a weird subgenre that's kind of around and about right now. Because we also had another one with, oh, who do we have one? We had another one, not just last week, but there's one way before okay. we had two. It was Memory or one of those movies we watched. Anyway. Yes, I think Liam Neeson, right? Liam Neeson, yeah. that's yeah. that's the yeah. one, yes. So there's just been a weird, a weird spate of these. Anyway, uh, the way this movie kind of works, I guess the way I would look at it is, because you keep seeing like uh, a name of a character come on the screen. Uh, and then you have like a little mini story of that character's version or play in the events that led to this maybe wrongful conviction and death row of this guy. To me, I think the way I look at it is kind of like, you know how you see those um, murder boards, that the uh, detective set up where they put up sure. a picture and they start putting strings and connecting everything. So essentially that board is getting assembled as you're watching this movie. So I guess your enjoyment or non-enjoyment will depend on how much you are engaged in those various stories. I was in and out on those. I was half engaged in some and not very engaged in others. Uh, I had mentioned to you offline that I am now convinced after a few different movies that uh, Karen Gillan is typecast as the cyborgy character in guardians of the galaxy because i haven't seen anything since that shows that she can act her way out of a paper bag um and she is distracting to me every time i see her now that being said i i quite enjoy i Flanagan. love duel bruce i love duel well in duel that. supposedly she did a great job but she played the same role in both parts which made no sense because <laughs> she was a clone in one part and a human being in the other part but she was a clone in both parts whatever Eric and I were going to buy you a 4K of gunpowder milkshake pretty soon. We're going to send you your address. See, make you watch it with your eyes open, like scanners. I haven't or something. watched that one, tape. so I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I know I'm I'm kind of the minority there. Flanagan, love it. Whenever I see Flanagan, I'm like, mm-hmm. I just wanted, I wanted more Flanagan, and I more wanted more Russell Crowe. I wish, I wish I had 
the Pope's exorcist Russell Crowe instead of this Russell Crowe because he was reined in too much, I think. I mean, I know why he was reined in, but I kind of wanted to let him to be unfurled a little bit more in this movie. Overall, I would say it was fine, but it didn't really it didn't really engage me too much. Mm, okay, well then I think there might be a flip side to this review. I'm hoping, Eric, that you really enjoyed this movie. You called it a great mystery in the interview, so... Is it a great mystery? What what hooked you into this sleeping dogs? I I think so, but I I think a lot of what Bruce said is is kind of agree with a lot of it. I think where I diverge is I like the concept that Russell Crowe's character he's got dementia and he's going over a case he already went through, and in doing so, he's starting to find out how bad of a cop he was. Like like how, who made who made these who made these errors? Oh, I did. I'm the one that was on this case. I'm the one that flubbed this case. And then as he's going on, it, the the door kind of keeps opening wider and wider. And he starts becoming more and more aware that he was not a great cop to begin with. That's um, not a spoiler, right? Is that a spoiler? No, no. no. Okay. I mean, that's, I figure that out within like the first 10 minutes, like when he starts like kind of, he starts getting like little clues on the case. And he, he knew, he knew that he worked on the case before. But he wants to take another crack at it because and then the, as he goes along he's like oh i cut these corners here oh i cut and then tommy flanagan comes in and it's like you know you get the sense that tommy flanagan's like it, it, it's it's basically a dirty cop looking at his own work from the outside and that that's what i saw most of this movie at and then you know it comes to a head but that's kind of the mystery element that i like i like that yep. it's it's a mystery on someone else's past as they're discovering their own past Hmm. Bruce, no spoiler. That's not a spoiler that he's a that he's a corrupt cop or, or he's made, made mistakes. What do you think? I think that right off the bat, he starts discovering things and wondering, like, why would I, I have not followed up on that, or why would would he, why didn't we follow up on that? And he's he's discovering he didn't he didn't follow up on those things. So it hmm. I think it calls into question. I guess I would kind of ask if he could forget all the other things. How does he know how to be a good cop? I, I guess there's a lot of once again, it's selective use of this trope, which that's what I mean. It's 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 a tool just to make happen what happens happen. You know, I, so. I kind of get that, but at the same time, like if you're following up on some something and someone says something, if you're a corrupt cop, you're gonna ignore that or just not follow up on it. If you're actually interested in what's going on, it was like, wait, you said a thing. Oh. Uh, like, what's that all about? And they say, I don't know. You tell me. Or, I told you all this before. Why didn't I follow up on it? You know, that 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 sort of thing. So I think with him not essentially not being that same person that he was when he followed up on it the first time, now he's going through the same, the same detective or the same following up on the same, what do you call it, same thing. But he's doing it from a different lens now. He's doing it from a lens of someone that's interested, someone that actually gives a crap whether or not this this case is solved whereas before okay. maybe he was maybe he wasn't likely not because you know corrupt cops do what corrupt cops do yeah i don't know okay all right sleeping dogs it uh, comes out march 22nd and it's 100 minutes i loved it neo noir thought it was really really good cheesy at times and i was fine with the cheese the karen gillen stuff in the middle of the movie there is a mini story where she is sort of a femme fatale and she's intricately she's there's a there's a murder and the murder is i'm not even going to say who the, who gets killed but there's some very interesting characters in the middle of the movie and it sort of becomes its own story so you see the movie from the vantage point of actually a struggling writer which is interesting and russell crowe is sort of not on screen for about maybe 10 minutes it feels like and it goes it goes in different directions and i like the ending and i like the twist even though you could tell the twist from the a mile away also, for our spoiler discussion, we're going to talk spoilers. And then what, what do you say, Eric? I, I would say that the twist kind of got me, kind of pulled the rug out from under me really? in, in okay. a way. And I, but I think you're not wrong because, like, looking back, it, it's one of those twists that happens like, oh, I should have figured that out, but I didn't. So, okay. I, I, I would call that a good twist when it, when it can do that. It, it gives you all the, it gives you all the pieces and maybe you pick it up, maybe you don't. I didn't. So, all right. And I don't know if I, I think I told Eric this maybe a week ago. I don't know if you remember, or maybe I didn't even tell you. I'm like Russell Crowe and Michael Keaton. I might be suffering from some kind of memory loss, but Bruce, I didn't tell you this. With my interview with Adam Cooper, he talks about the ending 
of Sleeping Dogs, and I will put his spoiler stuff on top after our spoiler discussion of Sleeping Dogs, and he has a very interesting stuff. There is a very interesting scene that was left on the cutting room floor, which alternated the ending of Sleeping Dogs, and we're going to talk about that during our spoiler discussion, and you're going to have the Cooper comments as well. I love Sleeping Dogs. I'm giving it straight up four stars right down the middle. I, I strong recommend. If you love neo-noir and don't mind those cheesy suspense thrillers from the early 90s, which I eat up like slop, yeah, I think you, you might like it too. So that's four four stars for me. Bruce, your, your rating. I'm two and a half. Two and a half for Bruce Perky. Eric, what's your rating? Um, I think like on its face, this is probably a three-star movie, but I love the angle that they took with Russell Crowe's character. So I'd probably go three and a half on this. Um, okay, cool. Could even go four stars. I I, I wish they would have uh, leaned in harder on that because it's such a great concept of bad cop memory loss doing their thing over and realizing, oh, wow, I really sucked at that. It'd be cool to see another movie of this type that really kind of leans into that a lot, a lot more. Okay. So that but is out. As it is, this is a pretty good version of it. Okay, cool. Solid recommend. Three and a half from Eric Holmes. Bruce Perky, not a recommend. Almost close to a mild recommend. Two and a half. I'm giving it four stars. Sleeping Dogs again out in theaters March 22nd. I guess it's sort of a sad sadness because Bruce Perky loved the Pope's Exorcist so much. I wanted him to really love Russell Crowe as the detective with a lot of with memory loss. Who knows?